If you faced Bali Guhlang before, you have a good idea of what to anticipate in this battle. Get ready for a flurry of back kicks and tongue strikes. However, this time, Langli Guhbo's moves are charged with lightning, and the boss can also call forth bolts of electricity that will pursue you, demanding precise dodging skills to avoid them. <laughs> Beyond the double doors in Sandgate Village, you'll encounter two rats, guarded by the formidable two-headed rat captains. The primary threat in this confrontation is the larger second prince, while the smaller king hangs back, using ranged attacks to disrupt your flow. It's a frustrating duo, but I suggest you to focus your efforts on the second prince. If you can defeat him, the king will flee, ending the encounter. On the other hand, if you take down the king first, the second prince will grow in power, making the fight considerably more difficult. Subscribe for more gaming tips and share your thoughts in the comments below. Furry jackass! Ooh, Wait until Master hears about this! Hush! Hush, you fool! Our restoration! We can't say it out loud now. Oh, your poor brother and... What's that smell? Aye, oh, that's fresh meat. Delivering itself all the way to this dump for our lunch. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> <laughs>
扶铁子下，扶着九州高级轮朝规矩铁里，哪个说了才算，哪个放人不管。你瞧那书背到家人情。Earthwolf moves similarly to other large, heavy creatures you might have faced before, relying on powerful swipes and charging attacks. Utilizing the pillar stance can help you avoid danger effectively. And don't forget to use Immobilize whenever you can to keep it in place, allowing you to unleash your strongest attacks for maximum damage. When facing the first prince, don't let his imposing stature scare you. Dive in and keep the pressure on him. While he delivers powerful blows, his movements are sluggish and he tends to signal his attacks, making it easy to evade them. Additionally, feel free to use him to smash through the terracotta wall on the left side of the arena. Behind it lies a crucial unique item that will grant access to several hidden bosses throughout the game. Your brother's gone. Help me and atone for your past now. No! Are you mad? Go and hunt the monkey. I'm your father.
Despite his massive size and power, the Tiger Vanguard is remarkably agile, making him a challenging adversary. His lunging sword attacks can quickly drain your health, so patience is key in this encounter. To give yourself an edge, you can cast the Red Tide spell to get a temporary boost that lets you go on the offensive without the constant fear of taking damage. If you dare to look up the king's practice again, I'll serve your dimwit soul up for supper. Myself. Ain't you that old loser? Where do you come from, you bird-faced mug? <laughs> Who cares anyway? This body of yours is perfect for the art of rock solid. Similar to the Vanguard, the Tiger's Acolyte is quite proficient with a sword and can inflict substantial damage rapidly through his fluid attack combinations. The good news is that he has much less health than the Vanguard, allowing you to utilize your abilities effectively to eliminate him quickly and with minimal hassle.
Honestly, I think the Stone Vanguard is much easier to handle compared to the Tiger Vanguard. The slower speed really helps, and most of its attacks, including the special, where it summons a flurry of minions to leap at you, are quite easy to evade. The only real challenge is its substantial health, which means you'll need to be a bit patient while taking it down. Although he isn't officially a Yao Guai chief, the Drunk Boar is quite a force to be reckoned with, and mastering his attack patterns is essential for victory in this duel. He loves to throw dust clouds your way, obscuring his movements, so you'll need to stay on your toes to avoid being caught off guard. A smart strategy for this encounter is to use the Thrust Stance's retreating maneuver after a combo when he unleashes his sand. Then, you can follow up with a powerful thrust attack from a distance. The key is to evade the blinding sand and steer clear of his claw swipes. 
Once the sand clears, he becomes much more manageable, allowing you to claim victory in this battle. This is good. You and I should explore that realm together. I... Men in our time do not see the ancient moon, but this moon hath shone on men of yore. Behold! Be it the realm of sunset or the realm of gold, it's but an echo of the past. Legends speak of an ancient, colossal beetle in these sands. Whilst deep in slumber, it lay hidden beneath the Earth's embrace. When awakened, it would devour all souls that crossed its path. Its shell, harder than stone, defied the strikes of common arms. It struck fear into traveling merchants and wider to neighboring realms. But a yellow-furred rat sensed the immense power emanating from the insect. He halted the beetle's havoc and harnessed it for his own end. Joined. The king named the rat Gwai, the royal sage, and built a shrine in his honor. The bound beetle was a perfect source of power, so the rat stayed. He seized the tongue monk using the new power, and battled with Soon Wukong upon the Yellow Wind Ridge. The Gwai's formidable wings failed the vast expanse of the sky. Were it not for Bodhisattva Lingji, Tung Monk's quest for the scriptures would have failed. Yet, stripped of the rat's protection, the kingdom was plunged into a state of ruin. The once lush Yellow Wind Ridge now lies a desolate wasteland. <laughs> Black Loom is a Yaogwai king that can easily go unnoticed hiding behind a sand waterfall to the right of the Rockrest Flat Shrine. To challenge this formidable boss, you must first acquire the Lung Scale, which is also required to face the Red Lung in the Forest of Wolves during Chapter 1. Unlike the Red Lung, the Black Lung takes on a humanoid shape, though it is impressively large and beastly, fitting for a draconic Yaogwai King. At first, this powerful adversary may seem manageable, as its attacks are potent yet relatively easy to evade. However, it possesses a particularly tricky special move, where it slams the ground, unleashing a series of electric shockwaves that are tough to dodge. 
The best strategy to counter this is to climb onto a nearby rock, where you can safely wait out the chaos before rejoining the battle to finish him off. Honestly, the Gorai Taoist isn't worth the effort it takes to find him. Sure, he has a fascinating array of moves that involve splattering poisonous blood everywhere, but in the grand scheme of things, he's not much tougher than some of the standard foes you face. You'll likely dispatch him in no time and be on your way.
The Mad Tiger is a hidden Yao Guai chief that becomes available only after you complete the old rattle drum quest line. This fierce creature is incredibly nimble and possesses some devastating attacks that can deplete more than half of your health in a single strike. He is designed to be faced later in Chapter 2, once you've enhanced your stats and unlocked a variety of skills. To gain the upper hand in the battle, combine the Immobilize, Red Tides, and a Pluck of Many spells to quickly reduce the Mad Tiger's health and dictate the pace of the encounter from the very beginning. The Man in Stone may not fit the traditional mold of a boss, but he does come equipped with a health bar akin to that of the Mother of Stones, the hidden mini-boss essential for the Man in Stone questline. That's why I'm including them in my boss fight series. The Mother of Stones presents a unique challenge, though it's not overly tough. Instead of launching direct attacks, she opts to summon a horde of rocky minions to distract you. Don't be fooled by this tactic. Just dodge their strikes and focus your efforts on the Mother of Stones, and you'll take her down with ease.
In a similar vein, the man in stone, despite his taunting, is no real threat. His health bar is so minimal that you can likely defeat him before he even manages to inflict any significant damage. Oi, lad, come here, will ya? Some bastard has got me trapped in this rock with his spell. Even the rocks on the road have come to life. In that cave, there's a rock guai lurking. Holding secrets, I bet. Should you uncover the reason, I shall find my way out. Rocks turning into guais, just no small matter. Still here, eh? You ain't expecting us back, are you? Shameful! Be gone, you greedy inept wretch! Get lost! Disgrace! Get lost! Disgrace! Get lost! Expecting another treasure, are you? You wicked twerp! But I, I can't be handing it over to you for free. Come back later to trade with Will. Easy there. I'll need a bit of time to get restocked. When you gather all six Buddha's eyeballs and head to the massive boulder in the Stone Vanguard Arena, you'll discover that you can interact with it to place the eyeballs inside. Once you do this, the boulder will rise and transform into the secret Yao Guai King, Shigandang. Prepare for a battle reminiscent of the Stone Vanguard, but with a tougher opponent. He's large and lumbering, delivering powerful blows. The real threat comes from the shockwaves generated when he slams or pulls his fists from the ground.
As you delve into the secret area unlocked by the yellow-robed squire's questline, you'll come across the Tiger Vanguard, a variant of the original. This alternate version is considerably less formidable, yet it still exhibits many of the same features and maneuvers, such as impressive agility and powerful combo attacks. Thankfully, with all the spells and powers you acquired so far, you should easily be able to dominate the Vanguard and proceed beyond the gate it stands watch over. Might. <laughs> Brave soul, why not use this might to aid my king's good deed? <sighs> Our king comes from Mount Lingshan. His kind heart seeks to end the place's suffering. The Yaogwai's skills run deep, yet with your help, our chances will be doubled. The king is just ahead. With my meager skills, I cannot join you. Please, go aid him quickly. Truth be known, being a father of two little ones, my life is not mine to give. Fuban serves as the primary antagonist in the hidden area you access during the Yellow-Robed Squire quest. Within this memory realm, you will team up with the Yellow Wind Sage to confront Fuban, a colossal sand beetle that wreaks havoc across the desert landscape. The battle against Fuban is relatively straightforward and follows a set pattern. Initially, you'll face the beetle solo, targeting its legs, which are the only vulnerable spots. Fuban will unleash slow but powerful slam attacks that are easy to evade. As the fight progresses, you can climb onto Fuban's back to destroy the vessel it carries, allowing the Yellow Wind Sage to join forces with you, leading to a swift defeat of Fuban.
here, at the western end of the world. Each day, the sun sets and boils the sea. The boiling hiss is sharp enough to ravage babies in their cradles. The people sound drums to counter the impact, but the drums draw this Yaogwai. The vessel this Yaogwai holds protects it from me. Your boldness in venturing here is clear. Aid me with this. It's right here, beneath us in the sands. Together, we shall rid the people of this wretched Yaogwai.
folks behalf I thank you The Yellow Wind Sage serves as the ultimate main story boss in Chapter 2, and he's likely the most formidable Yao Guai you'll encounter in this segment. 
It's crucial to approach this battle well prepared. This adversary merges the agility of the Tiger Vanguard with the brute force of the Stone Vanguard. But what makes him particularly challenging are his tricky wind-based attacks that are hard to dodge. To give yourself a fighting chance, I strongly suggest taking down Fuban, one of the chapter's hidden bosses, as he drops an anti-wind vessel that can help you tackle the Yellow Wind Sage effectively.
You even took your master's heed. Just for a short reign over this barren valley. Sattva Lingji of New Mount Sumeru, the warden of this rat. After the great sage's passing, his six senses were scattered across the mortal realm. This thieving rat chanced upon one of them, yet hindered by his meager might, he could not absorb its power. Thus he schemed with wicked intent, a victim of his deceit. I had my head taken by him. The sense requires such a grand container to release its power. I should bear the blame for his reign of havoc upon this ridge again. <sighs> Through your valor and sagacity, order has been restored. You are the sole worthy one to keep it. Please, keep it secure in my stead. <laughs> 